Hello everyone. Um, this is this is really weird, isn't it? Um, <laughs> how you doing? This is uh, Reggie Yates here. Um, I'm in Team GB House in um, in Stratford, uh, in East London, and the view from where I am is absolutely stunning. I can see the whole of East London. I can almost see. Uh, I, I think is that water I can see, or is that just my cataracts? I'm not entirely sure, but the view is absolutely stunning from where I am. It's the first time I've ever done a hangout, so um, I'm really looking forward to talking to you guys and finding out what you think about the Olympics, about our medal wins and also about Team GB. So hello to everyone in the Hangout. Hello. Hello. Hi, hello. Hi Reggie. Hello, guys. Hey. Um, all right, should we start um, left to right and uh, far away with some questions and stuff? Because um, I'm anything um, but an Olympic expert, but I'm definitely someone who's had an opportunity to see things firsthand. So let's have a chat, shall we? All right. Well, my name's Ayub. I'm currently living in Leicester, but London, born and bred. Uh, well, my question is for you. I mean, Grange Hill... Doctor Who, and now the Olympics. <laughs> Everything huge that is British and kind of iconic uh, you've been involved in. How does that feel? Um, wow, okay. Well, you, you've done your research. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, Grange Hill uh, was a long time ago. I had really, really bad braids and an and a, a awful dress sense. I think I was 16 when I did that. And I've been really fortunate to be involved in lots of different things that are, I don't know, yeah, quite literally very British, like Top of the Pops, like the official chart on Radio 1. These are all things that I'm incredibly proud to have been a part of, and um, it's a blessing, yeah, it's definitely amazing to be involved in things that you've watched, you know, such as Doctor Who. Um, so yeah, you sort of pinch yourself every morning, but hopefully there's, there's lots more to come. Okay. Cool, nice cool. one. Thank you, bruv. Hopefully that wasn't too much of a rubbish generic answer. No, that was, good. Like that was good. That was good. Brilliant. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, what was the name of your dog again? Your dog's amazing. It's Shug. Hey, Shug's Shug. Dog. And she's Shug a girl. Behaved. Just oh. to, to confuse things. Brilliant. But, uh, Brilliant. yep, I'm Dolly, and my question would be, see when you did the, the Teen Gang series. Yes. Uh, the BBC Three documentaries, I, I'm addicted to those things. Um, did you find yourself in any, any hairy scary situations when you were filming for those guys? Did you well, we, um, with, the, with the Teen Gangs documentary, we went to some pretty, um, pretty grim parts of, uh, of London and obviously the north of England as well. And um, I didn't at any point feel, um, feel worried or scared, but you could definitely um, get an idea of how the places that we visited could be dangerous. And, could, and at times they were quite intimidating, but I mean, there's um, a massive misconception about um, what I find anyway when people stop me in the street and talk to me about my history and my past. There's a huge misconception that I've been brought up in some lovely leafy suburb and I'm some some sort of um, some really well supported middle class kid. But you know, my I come from a, a, a real working class background. I come from a council estate myself, and I used to spend all of my summers in. Um, in some pretty, there's no point in getting into detail, but I used to spend my summers in some pretty hairy areas in London myself with other members of my family. So doing a show like that in Streatham and, and various parts of South London as well as going to the North East, um, it wasn't particularly intimidating for me because, <laughs> believe it or not, a lot of the people that I went to school with haven't turned out as fortunately as I have. So it, was, um, it, was, uh, it wasn't as, as, as intimidating as it may have been for for somebody who I guess hasn't had the same sort of um, start as me, but you know I've been fortunate to to have the start that I had, and at the same time turn it around and and end up here where I am with you guys wanting to ask me questions, which is still a bit surreal to me. <laughs> That's great, thank you. No problem. Very long answer. Sorry. Um, what's what's next? Hello, guys. Hello. Yeah, it's Mike here. Um, this is a good question, I think, hopefully for you that you can identify with, because I've been watching on TV, you know, you've been hanging around like Hyde Park and getting right into the people. And what, what I want to know is what, in the last week or so, somebody has come up to you and said that it's just totally British about the Olympics. And I'll, I'll give you one example. Michael Palin went round the world in 80 days. He got back to London Heathrow, and then his car was on a yellow line or something, and the guy says, you can't park there, mate. And Michael Palin said that was the time that he knew he was back in Britain. So have you heard anything that's just irrelevant, you know, from the people's mouths that you thought that is Britain? Um, well, uh, Hyde Park's a great example. I mean, with the, with the BBC, I've done lots of stuff um, from going to watch Zoe Smith weightlifting right the way through to hanging out with Sean White and, um, and sort of getting his take on the Olympics. Um, but the thing that I think, there's two things that I'll say that are distinctly British. The first thing is uh, taking your example, actually, of Hyde Park, and that was... Um, being in the middle of this park on a 
pretty grey day. And um, <laughs> uh, this wasn't while we were filming. This another day. I actually went down there with a, a few friends. And um, uh, Soul to Soul came out to perform off the back of loads of people watching. I think it was the cycling um, over in the velodrome. So the velodrome cycling was on the screen and everyone was cheering. And then suddenly it started to rain and everyone looked really glum. And then Jazzy B and Soul to Soul walked out on stage, you know, at the pride of Camden, if you will. And suddenly everyone just forgot about the rain and had a good old dance. And I think that particularly being a Londoner, you know, there's so many different influences and so many great things to distract you in this huge city. And regardless of the weather, we as British people know how to have a good time. And that was a moment where I thought, yeah, this is this is proper Britain. And the second moment, I think, will be um, when I went to watch Zoe Smith weightlift um, with her mum. I went with her mum and her sister and her best friend. And seeing... Um, Seeing a mum be that proud of their daughter competing yeah. in the Olympics for Britain was phenomenal. Mm. But also seeing a British mum say very British things, regardless of the level and the stature that her daughter has, was amazing. Like her sort of getting annoyed at the fact that when the camera caught her backstage texting, she was just really, really annoyed that she wasn't being focused and looking good for camera. She was texting. <laughs> and she was just moaning at her like my mum would moan at me if I was caught texting. So it was awesome. Yeah, so there have been... Those are two moments that kind of come to mind, first of all. Cool, thank you. No problem, no problem. Okay, well, mine uh, is just kind of um, for your opinion, really, and it's uh, Olympic-related. I mean, do you, you feel that there's anybody, um, or will be anybody, in our um, generation that can come close to Usain Bolt? Oh, man. <laughs> I would love to see a British athlete be as dominant as Usain Bolt, just so we can cheer him on, and just so we know that we've got someone on the start line who is going to win. You know, there were a lot of doubts mm. about Usain Bolt, but um, I went down and did another one of these films, actually, um, for the Beeb over at a place they're calling Jamaica House, which is actually set up in, um, in, the, in the O2 in East London, um, not in South East London, sorry, not far from here. And um, uh, it was weird walking into this uh, Jamaica House, and there was like hundreds of uh, Jamaicans. Some had flown over and couldn't get into the stadium. Some of them live in, in, in London and... Uh, and the confidence that they all had in, in Bolt and Blake was phenomenal. And that is something that I'd love for us as Brits to have when it comes to one of our athletes. You know, there's lots of people that we have that are incredibly successful and have been phenomenally um, well handled and well taken at this, this Olympics. But, you know, you look at Bolt and you just think, he ain't going to lose, is he? He's going <laughs> to win back. <laughs> yeah. So being able to feel that about a British athlete would be mm. amazing. I think we, we, I don't know, we've got that weird sort of, I want to say it's pessimistic attitude, but we've got that thing where we think, we do. oh, well, he, he might not happen. Yeah, you know, it might. Um, whereas with Bolt, the Jamaicans were just like, yeah, well, yeah, he's just been holding back. That's why he's been running <laughs> up. Street, you know? Actually, so, if, if, I can, if I can just ask a quick jump in. question to that. Yeah. Is it, well, considering that and considering all the gold medalists, you know, 24 to 24 up to now, mm. um, we've had. Um, do you think that any of them are really going to be have have that kind of reputation in their sport where we'll have confidence that they'll win? I don't know if it's about questioning whether or not anyone's going to become the next Usain Bolt in the, the current uh, team and with the, with the current crop of athletes that are winning medals. I think what we should be looking at is who they inspire and if they inspire the next generation Absolutely. of athletes. And this isn't me speaking from some sort of sports pundit perspective because I'm definitely not one of those I'm just just like you guys I'm a fan of of what's going on in London at the moment I'm a fan of these Olympic Games and for them to happen um, here in the UK in our lifetime is amazing and um, I think the effect that it's had on me as somebody who is not sporty at all is brilliant so what it might do to some of these teenagers that are thinking about maybe trying out hurdles or thinking about sprinting it actually shows them that you know you can go and be the best in the world at something and um, that is a massive, massive message to send. You know, there's been lots of pictures today, actually, that I've seen for the first time of Jessica Innes um, as, a, as a kid sort of hurdling. And there's been lots of stuff floating around on, on the internet. In fact, I saw it on the way. I wish I kept it. I would have shown you guys. It was a picture that somebody had on their Tumblr. And it was um, a picture. One half of the picture was Jessica Innes at about, Jessica Innes, sorry, uh, at about nine or ten years old hurdling. And then a picture of her hurdling for gold. And then underneath was a caption, it takes a long time to be an overnight success. And that, for me, was like, yes, yeah, yeah. this is awesome, mm. you know, because I think we forget when it actually starts, and there's so many people that are being inspired by what's happening now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
There you go. There we are. He's back there we are. Don't worry. Carry on, Richard. I don't, don't know what happened there. Uh, what was I going to say? That was it. Yes. Um, may, yeah. Basically, to close that point, what I was going to say was we might just have our own Usain, but we just don't know it yet. Yeah. Check if you're live. Uh, yeah, I'm alive. Yeah, I think. No, we are live. Yeah, go on. We are still live. We're alive. I'm, I'm alive. <laughs> Can I ask, um, j just quickly, um, if you were given out, and I don't want to, you know, I do want you to name names, but I don't, you know, in Team GB, what, 540 of them, but if there was a gold, silver, and bronze med medal in Team GB for coolness, you know, yeah. caught your eye, who's just cool? You know, I could name yeah, a truckload cool. of them. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Just very cool. You know. I don't know. Uh, first and foremost, uh, because obviously here at Team GB House, there's a few athletes walking around. I think they might be able to see this. So the last thing I want to do is annoy any of them and get put. Um, I'm probably going to stay away from naming names, but um, a cool moment would that, be good, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know what? I think the fact that we've got so many young athletes that actually feel like real people, that for me is the coolest thing about it, you know, because I think in the past there's been so many athletes that feel kind of distant, you know, that, that generation of athletes that were phenomenal, like the Sally Gunnels and Linford Christie's and the Roger Blacks, and, you know, they were all really, really aspirational, but they didn't feel, uh, uh, this is me speaking completely from a personal perspective, they didn't feel like one of us, mm. whereas when you look at someone like Tom Daly, you know, you look at Jessica and, you know, you look at any of these guys, you think, wow, you know, you're, you're one of us. You're the moment I got with Bradley Wiggins when he was sitting on that gold throne and the camera panned around and there was all these people sat with Bradley Wiggins sideburns yeah. on the day, which I thought was just hilarious. Yeah, he, he feels like one of us. He feels like someone who is a fan of the sport. He feels like someone who, if he wasn't competing, he'd be sat in the Olympic Park cheering, cheering his equivalent on, you know? So, um, yeah, I think that there's definitely a different tone to this team of athletes this time around in comparison to what's come before. I think it's probably to do with the social media being so strong this time as well. And yeah. because it's in our country, mainly in our language, we're actually getting to speak to these people and see who they are and be able to interview them and talk to them through yeah. like hangouts and stuff. It's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. And it's definitely a different vibe. I think you're right. The social media thing has changed it. For instance, something like Handball has picked up massively off the back of it not only being on telly, but everybody tweeting about it going, look, if you're not watching BBC Three now, switch over because suddenly you've got mm. people watching things en masse and discussing them, which um, I think helps the, the promotion of a sport, but also it promotes athletes. And we are now sort of aware of far more athletes than we probably would have been without Twitter and Facebook and, and Google+, Plus. you know? Totally. I mean, I've, I've noticed lots more people are using, like, things to check in with, like, Get Glue and things like that just mm. to start more discussions whilst yeah. they're watching TV programmes. I'm well, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very different thing now. I don't remember the last time I watched a big appointment to view type program without having my phone or my iPad or something or my laptop on my lap, you know, because you want to see what everyone else is saying and you want to see what people are, are talking about, you know, and I think the Olympics is a great opportunity to do that, to, to have a big old natter and, and also chat about the things that you're seeing. Yeah, I think, I think one of the things the BBC has done very well with this Olympics is there is a lot more to watch. You just yeah. go to the website or you go on to wherever, the satellite yeah. or whatever, and you can see a lot more sports than you used to be able to in previous Olympics, and that has really made a difference, especially, like you say, for the more, shall we say, previously less popular sports like handball yeah. and things like that. You're getting to see a lot more of them now. Is this, is, this your way of saying, is this your way of saying that you're a massive fan of archery now? Uh, well, Taekwondo for one. I wouldn't have watched Taekwondo if it wasn't for the BBC right now, and I've been loving it all the way. Yeah. And fencing, I'm a fan of, but sometimes you don't get as much fencing as you want. Uh, Did you see that fencing incident when that woman didn't want to oh, leave? Yeah. Her, then yeah. The athlete just refused to leave. It was amazing. But I think that there's been so many great moments like that in this Olympics mm. that I kind of don't want it to end. You know, I mean, the, the cab oh, driver that was that yeah, yeah, well, the cab driver that bought me here would disagree with that because of the Olympic lanes, but I, I, I really don't want it to end because, because of the, the access that, that we've had uh, through a million and one different channels and things like this and the conversation that is stirred up. And as well as that, I think on the... I want to put a question to you guys. The thing that I saw today that, that kind of made me really intrigued about this conversation um, was the discussion about inspiring the next generation of athletes and, and the investment in them. I mean, what, what do you think it will take to make sure that we have this success again? Should we go what? from left to right? Uh, okay. Um, I'm on the left, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, um, I think that, uh, that we're going to need to invest and make sure that 
kids with talent who are inspired by the Olympics get the support they need. And it was something we talked about with the um, the shooting that the double trap champion um, yesterday. Peter Wilson. With, with, yeah, with Peter Wilson. That with some sports, age isn't actually a barrier. So there are other people who may not be in schools, may not be involved in sports societies at the moment, who can go in, who can like go for archery or go for shooting or go for something like that. So it's it's not necessarily just identifying them. But it's also making sure that um, the investment is made when talent is spotted. Nice. I'm just trying to work out where that siren's coming from. What part That's of the UK has got sirens? Is it Leicester? Leicester, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I think it might have been Essex. Well, I'm in Bradford, so I hear sirens all the time. <laughs> I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually in a... Inter close to an intersection that has a fire station over there, a police station over there, oh, and right. three hospitals that way. So wow. it can be anything where yeah. I am. <laughs> Fair enough. Your ears are probably ringing. Right, shall we, shall we move on then? So who, sure. what, what, was your, what were your thoughts on that? Well, I, I think we really need to invest in the coaching and making sure that there are coaches that are properly trained and can give advice to different age groups. I mean, we've got so many young people. There, there's just... It's frustrating. I used to help teach judo and there was only certain people who were able to um, get properly qualified to work with kids. You mm. know, and, and it takes money. So investing in making sure that there are coaches there and people who know what they're doing and can help encourage our kids to, to get out there and do stuff that's cool and not necessarily the stuff that they would instantly try mm. you know, the other sports that they might not try other places I mean I tried you know archery with scouts it wasn't for me but <laughs> <laughs> I then moved on to something else you know the right. scouts encouraged me to go and do something else yeah um, yeah I, I think there needs to be more encouragement with coaches I and mean, we didn't have a velodrome up here when I was younger and I remember going down and getting to try the, the velodrome down in Newcastle. And it was just a once in, at that point, lifetime experience to be able to go on one of those bikes and go around the track. And that was really cool. I'll always remember that. And I wished at that point it was up here because I was good at cycling. So I would have totally have done that. But it's allowing the kids now to do these things in their local areas and just get them continuing to do it. Mm, nice, okay, all right. One of the things I did share um, earlier on in the, my Google Plus stream, Reggie, is uh, from The Independent, which is the headline of London 2012 Sports Membership Inquiry Soar Amid Team GB Success, which is coming out today. Mm. So it sounds like the phone is ringing off the hook with yeah. new inquiries. Nice. I think you're talking about, uh, I'll just quote you from somebody from Putney Rowing Club saying, we've had over 50 inquiries in the last two days, you know, emails everywhere, it sounds like judo, gymnastics, it's just, um, you know, I hope that that's, I mean, for me, that's one of those things and we hope it is and it's the old, I've had my Christmas dinner, January the 2nd turns up, don't you, and you join a gym, don't you, and by the end of Jan, you stop, let's hope yeah. that, you know, this isn't one of those cases yeah. and the headline is true. Yeah. Yeah, well, hopefully people will be inspired. And um, I think that the athletes that have been successful are going to definitely campaign tirelessly to make sure that by the time we get to Brazil, there's a whole new crop of people that will surprise again. You know, considering how small, how small this little island actually is and how well we've done is phenomenal. To be no, fair, on the no, table, no, no, it's incredible, yeah. isn't it? All right, what, what were your thoughts then? Well, um... Yeah, I mean, pretty much, uh, pretty much what, what's already been said. I mean, it's, it's. I, I mean, when I was a kid, I don't know what it's like now, but when I was a kid, um, it's just a matter of um, you. There weren't really the opportunities there, which hopefully there are now. Uh, mm. I mean, if someone had a talent, it wasn't quite as. Uh, I won't say easy, but it's. You know, investment in sport is, is, is where it's at. I mean, if if we are investing in sport and the kids can get, um, you know, talented kids can get forward, then. Um, yeah, that's that's what we need to do. But but as you said, we need to keep this flow going, this momentum flowing, because the whole country's on a buzz at the moment. It's yeah. just mm. how well we're doing, and I, and I'm not sure how we do that without an event such as this uh, being sort of in our faces all the time. Um, mm. It will be difficult to do, but hopefully we'll do it. Yeah, um, I don't I don't I don't know if it's how well we're doing. I think it's how good it all looks from the opening ceremony right the way through to seeing someone like you saying who has absolutely nothing to do with Team GB, <laughs> yeah. seeing him do well. <laughs> In, 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 in our you know in, in our nation's capital it's amazing so um, 
I think it's not necessarily just about seeing Team GB do well, but it's also yep. about just seeing how great the games have been. Um, right, I've just had the signal that I think that that's it. I think that's our, that, that's your lot. Um, this has been really nice. I really enjoyed this. You guys have been great. Cool. And um, hopefully yeah. I did not waffle too much and um, <laughs> we've had a chance to, uh, to, yeah, to have a proper conversation as opposed to me rabbiting on. Love Rustin Mouse. Ha! Good. You got you got good taste. You have good taste. And no, I'm not going to do the flipping voice. <laughs> Alright, nice one. Thank, thank you very much, guys. I think that's me done. Take thank care. Thank you. Yep. Take care. Bye. Bye. Nicely done. Take care. Bye. All. See you. Yeah.